Hello again. One of the biggest challenges of photography is capturing an image at just the right time, such as these famous images, Milk Drop Coronet, shot in 1936, or Bullet Through Apple in 1964, or Death of a Light Bulb, 1936. All of these landmark stop-motion photos were photographed by Harold Edgerton, who is often referred to as the man who stopped time. Edgerton was a pioneer in stop-motion photography and used strobe lights to capture breathtaking images like these at exposures as fast as a millionth of a second. If you've ever tried shooting stop-motion shots like these, you know how difficult it is. It can take dozens of trials to synchronize your shutter or flash with the action you're trying to capture at just the right moment. Well, the good news is that now there's a device on the market manufactured by Hanel in Ireland called the Capture Module Pro Triggering Device that makes the job much easier. This device allows you to use a variety of methods to either fire a flash or snap the shutter at a precise moment in time. These triggering methods include sound, light, infrared, and laser. The unit is quite affordable and comes with an infrared transmitter. You can also purchase separate transmitter and receivers like these to complete the system. The folks at Hanel were kind enough to send me their product for testing and this episode focuses on my initial experiences with it. I've also included the efforts made by a couple of my students in the process to see what they could come up with. I couldn't wait to get started using the device so the first thing I attempted to do was capture a blueberry as it was dropped into a bowl of milk. Here's a shot of my setup. I mounted my Nikon D3100 to the bottom of my tripod facing down. I placed a clear glass bowl of milk directly below it and lit the scene with a single studio flash head set on its lower power. In order to fire the flash at the right moment, I hooked up the head to one of the receivers by a sync cord. This enables the wireless module to communicate with the flash. The next part was the most challenging aspect. I wanted the flash to fire the instant the blueberry landed in the milk, so I rigged up my laser pointer so that the beam traveled through the glass bowl over to the remote module located directly across from it. The trick is to shine the beam on a small area of the remote where the sensor is located, and once that path of the beam is broken, the remote in turn sends a signal to the receiver, which in turn fires the flash. Although I could have synced my camera shutter to fire at the same time, I decided to simply set the shutter to 3 seconds, which was just long enough to give me time to drop the blueberry and capture an image. I took an exposure setting of the flash and set the aperture accordingly, and I was ready to go. As you can see here, the flash fires at the moment the blueberry hits the laser beam, and the shot's been recorded. After some fine tuning, I was able to get some decent shots. These shots aren't perfect, however, and you can see that I eventually tried strawberries for better color and a bigger splash. I learned several things in the process of my inaugural shoot. One was to use a darker background to make the milk pop more. Another was to get better control of the mess made from the milk splatter continually building up. But by far the greatest lesson learned was that it would have been much better to set the laser beam higher up and then use the delay mode built into the module to trip the flash and capture the image. With that in mind, I decided to shoot again, this time using the delay mode and shooting straight on as a milk droplet struck the bowl of milk. In this diagram, you can see how I set this up using a pair of studio flash heads on either side of the bowl with a black felt background. Then I positioned the laser remote module set up several inches above the bowl using light stands and clamps. After establishing proper exposure for the shot, I began adjusting the delay time on the remote. The idea here is to delay the time the flash fires from the moment the milk droplet passes through the laser beam. I chose 15 hundredths of a second at first and found that it wasn't quite enough. Then I tried 25 hundredths of a second and found that it was too much delay. After several trial drops, I finally found a time that worked well, which was 22 hundredths of a second. Here you can see some of the results. What's interesting is that you rarely get the same effect with each frame no doubt due to several factors, physics probably being the main one. I must have shot 40 frames or so, several of them duds from the milk drop missing the narrow laser beam, resulting in the flash not firing. After a while I decided to try blueberries and strawberries again to get a bigger splash. I wanted to get my students involved to try out this system at my school, so I brought all the gear into the darkroom for the shoot. Our original plan was to try to capture a balloon filled with water exploding at the exact moment it's popped with a pin. Here you can see Carly and Lily setting up the balloon for the shoot. 
We're using black felt for a background and a single studio flash in a softbox for a light source. You can see how the sync cord is connected to the wireless receiver here. As it turns out, using a pair of non-diffused flash heads on either side of the set would have been wiser. But as they say, hindsight is 2020. Here you can see the laser pointer clamped to a light stand and across the set is the remote triggering module. You can actually see where the laser beam is shining directly on the remote's sensor. The exposure for the shot has already been determined and the girls have carefully positioned the balloon so that it will enter the path of the laser with the slightest movement from the left to the right. We're ready to go now. We turn out the lights and Carly stands by with a knitting needle, ready to take a stab at the balloon. The shutter speed set on 5 seconds to give her plenty of time to hit the target. She punctures the balloon, the flash goes off, and we wait a couple of seconds for the shot to render on the camera. Here are a few of the results, and although we have a few duds, we finally got a pretty decent shot. It wasn't, however, what we were expecting, and I later found out what the problem was. We were limiting ourselves by trying to time the puncture and balloon movement in too tight of a time frame. We would have been better off dropping the balloon onto something sharp and delaying the flash accordingly, as I'd done with the milk spatter. Live and learn. We then decided to try another experiment which was to fill the balloon with air and try to capture it exploding without water inside. We thought that the sound triggering feature on the remote would fire the flash the moment it picked up the pop of the balloon, but as it turned out, it didn't. The flash always fired a little too late, leaving us with nothing but a blank scene after the balloon had disappeared into nowhere. I recall that there was a delay feature on the capture remote, but was there any way to trigger the flash before the sound of the pop? Common sense then told me that if that were the case, it'd mean that the thing could predict the future, which is probably a little too much to ask. But seriously, sound probably could be used if it was made prior to the pop of the balloon, such as shooting the balloon with a gun and then setting the delay accordingly between the two instances. Instead of doing this, we used the lasers we did with the water balloon and decided to put confetti in the balloon instead of water, thinking that the bits of paper escaping the balloon would allow us something to film as it popped since it would scatter outward shortly afterwards. The idea actually worked somewhat, creating an image that was blurry but still colorful and interesting. What I really loved about this shoot was seeing shots like this where you can actually see a little puff of air escaping on the right side a split second before the balloon popped. Talk about exciting. The next shot looks almost impressionistic with the blurred colors only suggesting what's happening. This is a good one of confetti spatter. My very favorite is this one which shows some of the confetti still sitting in the bottom of the balloon even though it's already popped. How cool is that? So I've decided to save the best for last. Having been a bit disappointed from the results of the first shoot, we did another water balloon shoot, but this time including the capture's delay feature. By the way, I copped the idea for this shoot from the Hanel website, which has some wonderful instructional videos on using this system. Definitely worth checking out. So here's a shot of the set. Note that the laser beam path is set up a foot or so above the point of contact for the water balloon which is an X-Acto knife taped to a stand pointing straight up. The balloon will pass through the laser beam causing the capture module to fire the flash but not before the preset delay time has elapsed. Here's a clip of Carly testing the balloon and flash firing sequence with the lights off. You can see the eerie red glow when the balloon's in the direct path of the laser beam. And here's a series of actual outtakes from the shoot from the very beginning showing how we determine the delay time you can see that in the first shot, the delay was much too short, capturing the balloon not long after it hit the beam. After increasing the delay time a bit longer, we got this shot. A little longer still, and we got this. Finally, we hit the bullseye with this delay time, which was 18 hundredths of a second. Keep in mind that Carly had to be careful to release the balloon as close as possible from the same point something she did remarkably well. The rest of these shots are the best ones, each one having its own distinctive attribute. As the shoot progressed, I came in closer to the action and was able to fine-tune the composition. This is one of my favorites. You can clearly see the detail of the X-Acto knife piercing the balloon dead center, ripping it in two. The escaping water mist almost looks like angel hair. The spray is so fine. Here's a similar shot, but part of the balloon at the top left is still completely intact. This is one of the more interesting ones, with the shriveled balloon surrounded by water as it contracts. 
We decide to place blue gels over the flash heads and shoot black balloons to see what would happen. The results were wonderful. Because the black balloons don't record light, all you can see is the blue colored water, suggesting a sort of cosmic orb, something abstract that you might expect to see in outer space. By the time we had shot this last one, the period was almost over and we had to stop to clean up. All I could think of was how we could have gone on much longer since every shot produced something new and different every time. It was a blast. In summary, I thoroughly enjoyed testing this product and look forward to continue using it. I plan on having my students come up with creative ways to use the capture and am looking forward to seeing the results. I plan on posting those results in the future. I'd like to thank Hano Industries Limited for giving me the opportunity to showcase their products. It's been fun and rewarding. I'd also like to thank my students, Carly and Lily, for participating in this adventure. Great job, girls. Well, that's about it for this lesson. If you'd like to find out more about the Hanel Capture module, visit their website at hanel.ie. Until next time, have a safe, happy holiday.